Hello and welcome to MDZFL Lectures where I try my best to make medicine fun to learn. If you are new to my YouTube channel, kindly subscribe and share my channel with your friends as well. So today we are going to talk about innervation of gastrointestinal tract. It is primarily controlled by the autonomic nervous system which is further divided into extrinsic part and intrinsic part. Talking about the extrinsic part, it is further divided into parasympathetic nervous system and nervous system, whereas the intrinsic part of the autonomic nervous system constitutes Meissner's plexus which is present in the submucosa and the mindaric plexus which is present in the muscular layer of the gastrointestinal tract. Parasympathetic nervous system's primary role on GIT is stimulatory whereas sympathetic nervous system's primary role on the GIT is inhibitory. The Meissner's plexus which is present in the submucosa is primarily concerned with the secretion of different GIT hormones whereas mindaric plexus which is present in the muscular layer is concerned with the motility of the GI tract. Further going into some details of the parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous system, parasympathetic nervous system's stimulatory effect is controlled by cranial and sacral parts. The cranial part constitutes vagus nerve, which supplies from esophagus to the upper large intestine, whereas the sacral part is constituted by the pelvic subplanking nerve root value S2, S3, and S4. The sympathetic nervous system, which is primarily inhibitory to the GI tract, constitutes fibers in the spinal cord from thoracic 8th vertebra to 2nd lumbar vertebra. Now let us take a look into this small diagram to get our concepts further clear. Whenever some change occur in the wall of the gut, the chemoreceptors and mechanoreceptors take that information and send to the spinal cord or brainstem through efferent fibers. Now, the information is processed within the brainstem or spinal cord and it is then sent down to the gut by means of efferent fibers. Now, these efferent fibers are further divided into two types, the preganglionic fibers and postganglionic fibers. The preganglionic fibers are those fibers who have their cell bodies present within the brainstem and they send their axons down and they synapse with the dendrites of the postganglionic fibers, take information to the cell body, and then through the axons of the postganglionic fibers, that information is conveyed to the gut, and as a result, either secretion, motility, or any other specific function of the gastrointestinal tract is accomplished. Now, the lengths and properties of these pre- and postganglionic fibers are different for the parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous system, which we will talk about in central nervous system lectures. Thank you very much for listening.